Hello and welcome to the first tutorial of Knowledge for Digital Art. Um, this is a YouTube channel me and my friend Hendrik uh, made and it's a, it's a channel where we be giving a few tutorials um, explaining some of our techniques we use. Um, if anyone requests a tutorial we will take that in consideration. Um, if this is useful please like and subscribe. Um, and let's start with the first tutorial. Um, the first tutorial will be uh, X normal and uh, if you're working in 3ds max um, So basically it's mainly X normal baking normal maps X normal is a freeware program. You can download it here on the site Server error. Awesome All right, uh, and here you can see it um, If you stop Windows If you're a Mac, I'm sorry, but X normal is the bomb um, it's a very useful program. Um, it's used to baking uh, all kinds of maps. Um, we'll be showing you the normal map function. Uh, I warn you, it has an ugly user interface, but um, what it does is baking your maps and it does it really well. So, um, yeah, let's get started. So, we start in 3ds Max, and um, as I was working on the Dota uh, challenge, for a poly count, uh, for this bad boy. Uh, this is of course off Dota, not me. Um, but uh, I was making these claws uh, for him, and uh, this was very good uh, to explain the basics of uh, baking normal maps uh, from Max. So let's get in. Um, here you have the low poly mesh. Um, both meshes need to be on the same exact position else uh, the projection won't work of your normal map. Um, I also um, suggest you, um, you understand the basics of baking, so um, you you've know how to bake uh, inside Max, what, what, is it, what a box does, um, the principle of normal map baking. So um, if you're done with that, then you can watch this tutorial. Um, okay, so... They are at the exact same position. Um, the high poly mesh I uh, bring in from ZBrush and uh, it has been decimated to about 30%. Um, I have all the details I need since uh, it's a very uh, low poly object meant for a game uh, with very low resolution. Um, you'll see, you can see the, the wireframe here. It's, um, it's very low. Uh, geometry wise but um, th th this tutorial should also work if you have like higher uh, geometry no problem um, so to start out um, first thing you do is um, look at your low poly um, regarding smoothing groups um, you don't have to uh, set them um, you can just select them all and press clear all and put them on one smoothing group um, X normal will do the smoothing groups for you automatically so hey, hey, thank you X normal um, if you have strange results if you see like seams after your bake I suggest you um, go to the modifier list go to edit poly over here and what you do is select all clear all one and collapse this is something inside max um, I don't know why he doesn't do it in editable poly but yeah it's like that now. Um, so now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a full bake uh, to show you how to bake, but you will see uh, we, we will encounter some problems. Um, so yeah, first we're going to start with uh, exporting our low poly mesh. Um, you don't just export an OBJ file. What you do is you go to export, export selected, and in this you choose X normal. So, wait a second, I'm gonna get to my folder. Da, da, da. Mm. I always make an uh, X normal map where I throw in my meshes. Let's call it low. Yes, want to replace it. Um, click low definition mesh. Unless you have made a cage, you put this on, but we're going to put this off because we don't need to make cages anymore because Xnormal is going to do that for us. Export. The scene was exported successfully. Close. So that's for a low poly. 
Now for a high poly, uh, it's an editable mesh. I'm going to attach uh, the other high, uh, the horns, because now they're still separate. Okay. We're going to do the same. Export selected. And we're going to choose a high. High definition mesh, you just click it doesn't seem to put anything on so but I always click it just in case for some ex normal voodoo okay export it close now we're going to uh, open X normal and we're gonna uh, first in insert our meshes um, here you see your list of meshes um, first thing I do is clear all meshes so for the low definition and the high definition you press right mouse click and you select add message meshes meshes um, you can then choose a folder where you can find uh, your object so high definition mesh you select our exported model we go to low do the same for the low then baking options um, over here you um, you choose your um, where you gonna store your maps so we're going to go to my maps, okay. I make a map for normals. Um, I like separating them. Uh, so later on, I add uh, I'm into collusion, diffuse map, whatever. Uh, it's it's all how you want to work. So we're gonna um, call this one tutorial. Um, yeah, forgot to mention. Over here, you can uh, select um, TGA, JPEG. Don't suggest JPEG. Um, I use PNG because I have my mask. Um, it doesn't hurt using uh, TGA either. Um, over here, we're going to select our uh, resolution. So um, for this one, uh, for the example, I'll, I'll do it in a 1K map. Um, this needs to be on. Closest hit if Ray falls and discard back facing hits. Normal map, we select it on. We press this one. And tangent space needs to be on. And for the swizzle coordinates the I we put to minus uh, because that's the setting you need uh, for max um, edge padding uh, what this does is um, when you have your uh, your map maybe I'll open it for you to illustrate I'm going to open the map so as you see here here you can see it like um, goes out of the border and what you choose here at edge pen is you select two pixels outside of edge padding. So don't do this too far or else the edge padding will go from this UV to the other. So you don't want to do that. So two is enough when you work on the uh, 1K or three is also good, no problem. Um, you should put this higher up if you have a uh, higher resolution because you have more space on your map so we can handle more pixels. Uh, bucket size um, 256 or 512. I, I pick 512 just sounds larger, sounds better. Um, default bucket render uh, needs to be selected. Don't use open RL. Um, Anti-aliasing, uh, put it on max. We don't want uh, any uh, ugly edges inside our map. And what we're now going to do is calculate the uh, the box under the tools palette. You select rate distance calculator and you press go. So what he's now doing is he's um, looking at your high poly and he's making a cage and calculating the distance between your high poly and low poly. You see here the seconds, I'm going to press stop, copy results, values copy, okay. Um, you can choose to um, you can choose how long you wait. I'll explain later um, what's the difference between waiting longer and not waiting longer. So uh, close. And now, simply what we just have to do is generate maps. Um, I've also noticed that X normal renders faster. So hope the bad boy is, is done. And there we have our normal map. Releasing data. Okay, so um, kind of looks good, but you can see some strange things, and uh, I'll I'll explain to you what why our normal map isn't correct from the start. 
So um, tutorial normals. So over here you see um, the normal has like been projected over here, and it, it, it's like artifacts. So I'll show you inside 3D Max what actually happened. Um, all right. So I'm going to open material. And I'm using Xolio uh, shader, uh, a teacher of mine uh, created. And here we have our normal map. Um, at first sight, things look okay. I'm going to press uh, Omni Light in to show you. So as you see, the lightning uh, bounces correct. Light is here. It's here lighted. And so everything looks okay. Um, but what we have here is like we have these, these ugly artifacts. And what actually happened is um, X normal works different in the way it uh, projects your box. It actually also projects this onto this and vice versa. So uh, what you actually need to do when you're uh, baking is you need to like break it down. And like in the beginning, this will seem odd, but if you get used to it, um, you, it gets really quick and uh, uh, you don't have that much problems at all. So. Uh, how do we fix this? Well, it's easy. Let's control Z. And we're going to go back when um, these objects were separate. So I'm going to hide different pins. So uh, now all we have is this part. Uh, because this, this is more solid. If you have pins, they uh, tend to uh, bake on top of each other. Um, so now we're, what we're going to do to have much better bake is we're going to select this and do the same process again. All right, um, I'm back again. I had made a quick cut so um, to set this up. So here you see the original bake and you can see um, over here the pin is projected on top of here and this is something uh, we want to avoid because when you see the clause you can see the projection be on top of this so what I did was is I detached the pins so I detached them and I did the same for the high poly for the high poly so I detached the pins and I took these two objects put them in X normal and what I then did was generate maps and the same process all over again. Um, so what he now did is he went from the projection being on top of this to having no projection at all. Um, you see this artifact? Um, yeah, that was me being a bit clumsy. Um, it was because I didn't wait it too long enough for uh, the ray distance calculator. So over here. Uh, to go back on this, when you press go, it waits a couple of seconds. So first computing, going to wait 5 seconds, okay, here you see 5 seconds and then it's going to go to 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Um, if you don't uh, wait too long, the problem you're going to have is the box is not going to be able to extend far enough, which uh, is going to result in here just where he's project projecting basically nothing. Over here you have the same. Um, so what you need to do is wait long enough. Um, then we have another problem here, and this was basically, I, I did this on purpose, um, this was to show um, your geometry got to be right. So over here, if you look at the wireframe, it's just too short. You can see it stops projecting here. So uh, it, it won't do any projections from here to there. Um, make sure your mesh is right. Uh, that's basically what I'm saying. But if you know the basics of normal mapping, you should know how to do this. So now I waited 60 seconds. Stop. Copy results. This is a long time. So now I'm going to just bake it again. And here we have the results, and as you can see, the artifact over here went away. Why? Because 
I'll show you that it went away. Low claw. This was the original when I waited like not long, uh, like below five seconds. And this is the new one. So uh, what he did was looking for the best way to explain this to you guys. Um, okay, so over here you can see my high poly on top of my low poly, and uh, over here you can see. Um, from this point to that point, if I'm going to hide, see, there is a certain distance over here, from here to the low poly mesh. So this distance takes a few seconds. And if you only wait five seconds, problem is, it's going to be probably around here. So if I erase, it's going to be a here. So what he's going to do is he's going to probably big this because it's far enough and this, but as the mesh gets higher, he won't be able to project it. So that was the artifact we were coming up with. So wait longer to fix that. Um, why wouldn't you wait long? That's for example, if you're uh, doing fingers, um, gonna draw a quick hand. If you're doing fingers, nice. All right, um, between the fingers here, you don't have a lot of free space. So uh, when he's calculating the box, it's going to be actually the reverse. Instead of waiting long, you will wait not too long because the problem is if your box, ex box extends, so you're making your box around your fingers, and you wait too long, the two boxes will intersect. And this is something you don't want. So if you, again, fingers, if you don't wait too long, the box will go like this. So that's if you like wait under five seconds. So that, that's something I, I, I do for the fingers. Um, and that's basically, basically it. So um, I hope you find this tutorial useful on um, using X normal. Um, it is some getting used to in the beginning, but I guarantee you it's um, 10 times faster than making your box and making sure everything is right and rebaking and checking if it is right or not. Um, also, if you have any feedback, feel free to send us. Uh, if you want to know, uh, want to do any uh, tutorials, you can uh, check uh, our portfolio. This is from my friend Hendrik. Uh, you can check his uh, CV or something and look at his software. And if you have any questions, here's his pretty face. Um, if you have any questions uh, regarding some software, you can feel free to ask and maybe we'll make a tutorial. Uh, same for my side, I will give down the links below. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can always ask. Um, regarding 2D, my friend uh, Jordi also has a channel. And this is if you want to learn more uh, 2D stuff. So be sure to check his channel out. Uh, subscribe uh, if you like it. I like it. I subscribe. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope you liked it. And uh, see you next time.